Hello, thank you for joining me for this webinar on how to enable powerful connectivity between edge sources and Kubernetes backend. My name is Lior Navat. I am the co-founder and the CTO of CubeMQ. Why we are here? As many of you already know that Kubernetes has become the de facto standard for deploying container-based workloads. It's so popular and fully featured that Kubernetes has evolved to allow clusters to exist on across multiple clouds and even to run on edge computing devices, even small ones. But Kubernetes isn't inherently aware of location. It's like an abstraction layer on top of some kind of computing resources or some kind of architecture distribution. Hence, the complexity, the complexity of building a connected, stable, and reliable data transfer from edge to backend become a very significant challenge for most of development teams. What I mean is that sometimes when you are develop a system on your backend with a, a lot of powerful resources like network and CPU and memory, this is not the case once you need, need to connect to some kind of edge devices that the resources characteristics are not the same as uh, uh, in your local network. So one of the uh, uh, one of the enablers to do such architecture is using a messaging platform that's sitting on top of Kubernetes as is enabling to do communication and high reliability connectivity between all the components in your architecture. What we're going to learn? First of all, I'm going to introduce you the KubeMQ messaging framework. We will dive in into each component, what is each component is doing and how they, can, they are interconnected between each of them to form a very high scalable edge backend connectivity. Also, we will look on a use case, a live demo of how to uh, move data between edge device to S3. And here, what we're going to do is going to show how we're using all the KubeMQ messaging components to move files that sitting on remote location and copying to an S3 buckets. Okay, so KubeMQ platform components has four main components. The first of all is the main component. This is the um, KubeMQ cluster. This is an enterprise grade message broker and message queue. It's very scalable natively to Kubernetes. It's high available and very secure. On top of it, we have three components that together are forming the ecosystem of KubeMQ platform. The first one is KubeMQ targets, is um, a container-based targets, a connector that allows connecting to about 70, 75 different services from KubeMQ to them. Services like databases, cache, other messaging system, file system, storage, such things. The second component is KubeMQ sources. This is actually the other side of uh, of KubeMQ targets. This is allowed to ingest data into KubeMQ. We will use this as one of the examples in the use case. It's allowed to bring data into KubeMQ and then spread it between other services or even used to different connectors like KubeMQ target. KubeMQ bridges is more the interconnectivity between KubeMQ clusters. It's enabled to transfer data between one KubeMQ cluster to another one, or to replicate, or to aggregate, or to do any kind of transformation between twin KubeMQ cluster. This also enables to do cross clouds or cross availability zones or something like that, that data between two, two or even more KubeMQ cluster. We we'll start by a little bit discuss about what is KubeMQ message broker, what is the main features, and later on we we'll see some features that will help us in our use case. First of all, KubeMQ is deployed with an operator uh, for full life cycle operation. This is very important because you would, you want to uh, have the ability to do a live rollup of the upgrades as day two operations. So it's deployed with operator. Uh, it's very fast, it's written in Go, it's small, uh, lightweight Docker container. It supports actually two main messaging families, the asynchronous one and the synchronous one. In the asynchronous one, uh, we're talking about uh, durability 
FIFO queue base is like send and forget type of uh, messaging type. We have a publish subscribe event. This is also asynchronous, asynchronous uh, uh, messaging platform. And we have also PubSub with persistent means that instead of uh, like an in-memory pub site for an event or, or something like that. We have uh, uh, we have uh, probably subscribed with some persistent, uh, we call it event store. And in the family of synchronous messaging, we have the RPC commanded query messaging patterns. One of the main features of uh, QMQ is the transport layer. QMQ support GRPC and REST and WebSocket transport layer with TLS and support for both RPC and stream mode. This is very important. We discuss about how, why it's so important uh, supporting streaming in Kubernetes messaging system, mainly when we're working with a very low bandwidth devices like in edge, in edge location. Also, Kubernetes support support um, access control, authorization and authentication. Uh, we have multicasting and smart routing. We'll uh, touch on a little bit uh, later. And one of the key features of QBMQ is uh, almost no need for messaging configuration needed. No need to set queues, exchanges, nothing. Actually, you are setting it up, sending a message, and that's it. QBMQ has uh, uh, support for .NET, Java, Python, Go, and Load Edge SDK. This is sit on top of GRPC protobuf. And also, of course, we have REST interfa interface for other frameworks that don't have the support for gRPC. Let's talk about the queue messaging pattern. Uh, the queue messaging pattern is very similar to, if you're familiar with the uh, Amazon SQS, it's a FIFA-based uh, order uh, preserved message queue. Exactly one uh, message delivery guarantee can send batch and receiving has expiration level of messaging you can set delay to processing messaging you have we have that letter queues long polling streaming of queues in out we have peak messaging means that you can look on the on the queue see what kind of message you are waiting for processing and then you can decide what what you want to do you can do at all you can do uh, change message uh, message visibility reject messages you can specific ACK messages, you can resend messages to different to different queue. Also pull and push modes depend on your architecture. In the events pub sub uh, messaging pattern, it's a it's a real-time messaging pattern, very, very fast. When I say very fast, we're talking about millions of millions of messaging per second. This is in memory, has some consumer group support with uh, a wildcard support, has load balancing between consumers. Support is only once message delivery guarantee means that if you didn't consume, the message is lost. As I said, uh, wildcard petitions, and it's not persisted. The event store, it's like the event store, the events uh, messaging pattern, but it's now it's persisted. means that every message is persisted to some kind of uh, storage. In QMQ, you can define PVC or you could want to use the MFARL file system that provides you the uh, container. The same like the event in, in memory, support at least one message delivery guarantee means that you can replay the message if you want later on. Also, team support, uh, you can do, uh, you can connect and ask for messaging starting from uh, the last message that was sent or the first one from, from the, actually the queue, uh, support message sequence, timestamp, time duration, you can play uh, according to what you want to do. The RPC query and command message patterns is the synchronous part of QBMQ connectivity mode. It's mainly for connection to um, um, a real time, like a database, if you have a command or you have a query that you want to send a message to a database and return some kind of query back with the data. It's about two, actually two uh, sub uh, message pattern. What one we call command, the second uh, uh, called query. Command is like a web book. You're sending um, a message to some kind of service and you get a message back if it's work or not. If not, what is the error? The query is more sending to a database, getting back a data back. So together, this give you full view of QMQ messaging capabilities. What is the advantage using QMQ over other solutions? First of all, it was designed and optimized to work on Kubernetes with seamless integration with other Kubernetes components. This means metrics. This means working with a service mesh. This means that you can run 
everywhere. It can run on a cloud, it can run on-prem, it can run on edge device, it can run uh, with in cluster uh, together, it can be run standalone, it can run on even a drone. Uh, supporting from ARM 764 uh, to uh, very high-end powerful workloads on very powerful CPUs and memory. Has all the messaging pattern run anywhere, very low required uh, resource CPU. Uh, we have tested uh, the, the Docker content is about 40 meg, so it's, it's, it's very, very small. You can, you can develop and build the complete architecture with CubeMQ. Other components like target bridges and sources, we will see them done in, in, in our demo and discuss it about it now. It's enterprise uh, ready out of the box. No need for dedicated persistent volume. It's again depends on your usage of your messaging patterns. And I would like to, to say the importance of gRPC interface. It's more performance, less latency. It's a, it's a unified API. And one of the biggest advantage that is that in when you are using in Kubernetes and using messaging, the opening and the close connection all the time is very highly cost. This means that using KubeMQ with the streaming capabilities, you are open once and you can stream data as, uh, 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 as much as you you want. This this give you late, low latency and also less consume less of resources to handle such transfer data between uh, endpoints. Okay. Let's see the first connector of KubeMQ messaging framework. The first one is the KubeMQ targets. KubeMQ targets enable and allows to build a message-based microservice architecture on Kubernetes with minimal efforts and without developing connectivity interface between KubeMQ, message worker, and external systems such as database, cache, messaging, and REST-based API. When you're building a microservices based on messaging platform, you need the interconnectivity between other services. For example, you have an API and you have uh, a database that need to get information from this uh, uh, database into API, or we want to save the, some data on cache, or we want to say, uh, we want to take the data and do some kind of uh, uh, queuing in order to process later. Human crew targets give you this ability to uh, connect uh, KubeMQ to other services. KubeMQ targets is an open source project that has we, we sit on GitHub, and you can uh, log in and see. And and what you can see is the the the, the wide area of support of services. We have uh, about eighty uh, different connectors for this container. We can see we have cache. Redis, Memcache, Hazard Cards, some stores, database like uh, Postgres, uh, MySQL, uh, Mongo, Cassandra. And also we have uh, messaging like Kafka and RabbitMQ and other MQTT. And also we have a basic support for, uh, we have a, a, a support for basing services in the clouds, in, like in GCP, we have all the cache there. Um, in AWS, you can see a, a large service that we, we are supporting from stores, that, uh, the, all the database, all the messaging, storage, and also in Azure. So, so the next thing we're going to discuss is QMQ sources. QMQ sources is the, actually the other side of uh, QMQ targets. It's allowed to ingest data inside uh, into KubeMQ uh, uh, and enable you to, for example, form some kind of uh, ingesting component inside to your backend. It supports other messaging uh, components like RabbitMQ, Kafka, M MQTT, and also like a file storage. And we we'll see it uh, later on in our demo how it works. It's um, mainly working together with QMQ targets and more for also for if you want to migrate an old services, like if you have services in uh, RabbitMQ and want to move to Kubernetes and you want to have to, to still have connectivity to a uh, RabbitMQ outside of Kubernetes, so you can use the sources and the targets from uh, that support RabbitMQ in order to do form some kind of migration path for, uh, for them. KubeMQ source is also an open source uh, project. You can uh, look it into GitHub. And here we, we have all the sources that we, we support. Um, from the from HTTP, like, uh, uh, we have uh, like an API gateway. This is a very interesting connector. We, you, you can put KubeMQ sources as, as an API 
gateway in front of your uh, user and you can uh, absorb data inside and it you can place on a queue or the, to process later. It's like an API gateway. For messaging capability, uh, we have almost all the available one like Kafka and IBM MQ, Active MQ, storage for file system. Other, as we have in the targets, we have also support for the web type of uh, sources like in Amazon and Azure and GCP. To conclude the ecosystem components of uh, QBMQ, I want to discuss about uh, the bridge connector. The bridge connector allow to connect, allows you co to connect between QBMQ clusters. There's several uh, connectivity, and I will show you in, in a second in, in the GitHub uh, um, repository, but the main idea is that you will, uh, uh, the ability to interconnect between QBMQ clusters, no matter where, they are if it's on other regions, other availability zones, other uh, in the cloud or uh, in your on-prem. It depends on and uh, how you want to connect between them. Back to GitHub, QBMQ Bridge is also an open source project that we have about four topologies. One is the bridge is one-to-one -one connectivity between clusters, means that I can connect from cluster A to cluster B. We have replication, means that you we have uh, a way that you, a data in one cluster can replicate the same data to different clusters. This is very uh, appealing to if you have some kind of ingestion of analytics or many, many of uh, forms of flow, of streams of data that you want to consume in, in, in several uh, Kubernetes uh, and QBMQ clusters. And we have some aggregation, means that you can collect many, collect a lot of data from uh, many uh, cluster and send it to another cluster. And what we call um, a transform that it's like a, a mix between replication and aggregation uh, together. This concludes the QBMQ platform component description. And in this point, I would like to show you a use case of using QBMQ and the component how to move data between Edge and S3 buckets in AWS. The use case that I'm going to show you is taken from one of our clients that is a multinational technology company. He has a hundred of remote edge location that sending uh, in daily basis hundreds of gigabytes of files that need to be uploaded to S3 for uh, some uh, research. The research is done by other services that digesting this file and producing some outputs, sending back to the client with some uh, information. They are currently using IBM MQ because they are uh, on the VM type world. And when they want to move, they, want, they are currently moving to uh, Kubernetes and they need a solution that will be container-based and will be more robust and uh, much faster than what they have today. They have uh, also a, a cloud and on-prem solution that needs to be support, which means that it's not only from Edge to uh, AWS, it's also for bridging between two locations of on-prem and a cloud. I'm going to divide the demo to four steps. Before going to start the steps, uh, I'm going to talk about briefly, uh, we're going to use the QBMQ build and deploy building tool. This is an online building tool that will help us to configure all the components and to deploy them very quickly to a Kubernetes cluster. So we're going to use this tool to follow configuration. And for the steps, I'm going to do like this. In step one, we're going to deploy a QBMQ cluster on a remote Kubernetes cluster on GCP Google Cloud Platform. We're going to add a QBMQ target that from one end would be connected to the local QBMQ cluster. And on the other side, it would be send and save files on the S3 buckets on AWS. The second one, the second step would be deploying, we will, we will create a Kubernetes cluster with K3D, daemon for K3S, and then we're going to deploy a QBMQ cluster on this Kubernetes cluster. We're going to add a bridge that connects between the local one QBMQ cluster to, to the remote one that's sitting on GCP. The third step will be configuration of 
KubeMQ sources. This would be a standalone KubeMQ sources application that from one hand would be listening to the local, local files that we will send, put there later on some files. And on the other side, we'll send the files that he is listening and take from this file folder to a queue in KubeMQ that will be later on, will be sent to the S3 on the remote side. Step four would be moving some files. So let's do it. Step one. In step one, we're going to create a KubeMQ cluster on a remote Kubernetes cluster. In this case, we're going to deploy on GCP. For this, I'm going to use our build and deploy tool. As we can see here, this is the KubeMQ build and deploy management console. This is a web um, application. This application allows you to configure all the KubeMQ components and be able with kubectl command line to deploy YAML files into Kubernetes cluster and then you can create your architecture as you desire. So step one is creating KubeMQ cluster on GCP Kubernetes cluster and also adding KubeMQ targets that points to S3 buckets that will take files from a specific topic or channel, we call, we're going to call it S3, and save it as a file on AWS S3. So let's start by creating KubeMQ cluster. Clicking on a get cluster, we're going to add, and here we're going to create a, a put kubemq with a demo, kubemq namespace demo. Very important is that we're going to expose the kubemq uh, cluster outside in order that the bridge in step two and step three will be able to connect directly to, to the kubemq cluster that's running on GCP. We're going to put the gRPC interface with load balancer. That's it. And we do save. And we're going to do a deploy. Here, when I do click on deploy, I can get a manifest. And here I get two manifests that I can play with. One is the initialization of all KubeMQ, CRDs, uh, definition, uh, RBACs, everything. And the second one is the, the, the YAML that, that is representing the KubeMQ cluster. So I'm going to start with init. I can click it and go to the um, uh, console. This one. Okay. So it's already since I already did it uh, before. It didn't change. Uh, it didn't change anything. But now I'm going to use this one. I click one and. And here we can see that he created KubeMQ cluster um, on the KubeMQ demo namespace. We can see what is the status. Cube CTL get pods KubeMQ demo. See that everything is up and running. You see also the operator. Another thing I want to do is to get the IP address of uh, the load balancer that GCP created for, for me. So we're going to do with services, SVCs. Demo. And we can see that we need to take this IP address and save it for later use. Now, the next step is to create the targets. So here, what we're going to do, we're going to deploy um, a KubeMQ targets container into the same namespace that's running KubeMQ cluster. And here we're going to select a connector from S3 type. Then we can see that we have here. And here we have two 
sides, what we call the sole side and the target side. The sole side is from where you're taking the information to be uh, um, running on S3 target side. So from here, we're going to select the queue. And here we're going to select the GRPC service address here is QBM queue cluster, GRPC QBM, uh, QBM, QBM queue. But here is QBM queue demo. This, this is the namespace. And the channel is S3. Here I'm going to put the AWS, AWS uh, keys and all the information and then do save. Here I'm getting uh, the information of targets. Of course, I can add more, more targets if I want, but here I can do the manifest. But what I want that it will run on uh, uh, the namespace. So I'm setting the namespace demo, getting the manifest, the same again. And here I'm going to copy paste and run. Created. We can see if I want the pods that got targets created. Okay. Another cool tool is kubemq CTR. This is the command line of kubemq. We can even uh, look into the container with the logs. We can do cube. MQ CTL get cons logs. You will select which one, and we're going to use this one. And you can see that it's already initialized. So this concludes step one. In step two, we're going to create a cube, a cube first, a Kubernetes cluster on a local machine, like an on edge device. We're going to use K3D as the Kubernetes distribution. This is um, a daemon for K3S for Windows. Then we're going to deploy a KubeMQ cluster inside this Kubernetes cluster on the edge. Then we're going to create a bridge between the local KubeMQ cluster that's sitting on the edge side and pointed to the remote Kubernetes cluster that's sitting on GCP that we configure in step one. So what we're going to do first, we're going to create a cluster for the edge with K3D. K3D cluster create. We're going to create a cluster. Okay. That's it, that everything is up and running. See, it's running. Let's see that everything is up and running from the pods, pods. I did a mistake, so let's do this one. Let's see that everything is running. So now we're going to run to again to the our build build deploy tool. Here we're going to create a cluster. Here I can delete one, and then I will create a simple cluster in the, with the default kubemq namespace to save deploy. And here since we're starting fresh, so I'm going to use the init. And then we can do this. In order to see that everything is up and running, you can do kubemq ctl get cluster that everything is up and running, still, still not ready. This means that it's still downloading all the images. Cube CTL, pods, 
Yeah. Up and running all of them. You can see here. Three from three. And now we will add a bridge, a cube and cube bridges. And the role of this bridge is to bridge between the local cube and cube cluster that's sitting on our local edge Kubernetes cluster to the GCP Kubernetes cluster with the QBMQ cluster that's sitting there. In order to do this, we will add uh, a bridge in this menu, QBMQ bridges. We will add a bridge. We'll call it bridge S3. And now here the source, because we are running locally, so the source will be connected to the local QBMQ cluster, which is the QBMQ cluster that's sitting on the edge um, Kubernetes cluster, the K3T. We will select Q, we will select S3. And here the target will be the remote one, the QBMQ one that's sitting on GCP. And here we're going to use the, the address that we recorded before with the load balancer that we exposed in this QBMQ. And this will be this one with this IP address. Second. And it will be here. When we're going to do save, and we see we have a bridge from local QBMQ cluster to a remote one. Let's do a deploy. We will have another manifest and we going to copy paste here. And it was created. In order to see this, we can do cube CTL, get pods. Pods. If it's a bridge running, also we can see if we want to get a cube MQ CTL get column logs. You can see that we have here, and we see that on one hand we connected to the local one and the target one. Now we can go to the third step. The third step is bringing the QBMQ sources as a standalone application. This in this uh, in this uh, case it's a Windows one. From one hand, this QBMQ sources will listen to a local folder that we're going to set up, and will send the messages, the, the the files that in this folder to the local QBMQ cluster that's sitting on the edge device. Here we're going to do it in two sub steps. One is creating the YAML file for the QMQ sources for the uh, configuration. And also we're going to expose the QMQ cluster that's running locally to the port that the QMQ sources will be able to connect to. So we will start again by let's close this one. With, with sources, and here we're going to add a source that it's a file system source, file system source, and here we're going to have this setting. The setting here will be what will be the source folder names, means that what is the local one here, we're going to use the e demo s3. To this file, the, sorry, to this folder, we're going to uh, upload in the image, and then this is what we want to see on the S3 buckets. We're going to set the buckets. This is the bucket's name, and we can see it here. This is currently empty. This is the buckets on QBMQ targets. Nothing is here. And the targets here will be uh, a local one. So we're going to do this one and also a local host. Again, this is because we are running it as a standalone application. It's not running on a container. This is another advantage of 
QBMQ connectors that can run also as a connector and also uh, as a Windows or Linux or any kind of other um, um, other uh, file uh, in architecture uh, types. Here we're going to put S3, save, and we're going to deploy. Now, since we are not running on Kubernetes, we need only the we need only the the URL of the configuration. Here we're going to use going to the folder of kubemq some resources. Sorry, um, CD sources. And we're going to run kubemq sources. I want to get, and here we're going to take only this one. But before we're going to run it, I'm going to do some port forwarding. kubemq CTL set cluster proxy. You will go do for all the ports. And here we're going to run it, and it's going to start running. It will try to connect to uh, to kubemq, and here we it's connected and running. So this is step three. Step four is a simple one. Let's move, put some files on this folder. And then what we're going to see is that after a couple of seconds, it, all the files will be disappeared because they're going to be moved. Actually, it will going to send, will be sent to kubemq local one, and then through the bridge to the remote one on GCP, then to the targets, and from the targets will be uh, uh, save to S3 bucket. So let's do this. I'm going to put some files there. Uh, put some some images. Oh, five images. So each one is uh, one to five uh, meg. And then we can see here after a couple of times it was disappeared. And we can see here if it's we have a problem. And let's see on the S3. If it was sent, and here they are, all of them, since all the files that running on was in my edge device now are on the S3 buckets. This concludes our demo. If you'd like to try QMQ, you can head to qmq.io quick start. This is also conclude our webinar. Thank you for watching and hope to see you soon again. Thank you.